This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Only Friends podcast. Today's the hangover episode. Mm-hmm. We are going to be trying to regroup and figure out what the hell is next after that circus that occurred last night on High Stakes Poker. Uh, as always, I'm joined by my ride or die, Brian Lamana, aka The Tort. What's happening, Burke? How well, you feeling today? I, I'm, Good? I'm right? fucking beat, man. Yep. I, I'm legitimately like exhausted. I'm exhausted for you. It's funny because I didn't do anything. I, only, I didn't play many hands. I didn't get dealt in much and I just didn't engage. But holy shit, is it tiring sitting through that? <laughs> I wore my poker out loud shirt because we went into some, some poker and it was loud. Yeah, it was loud. <laughs> uh, also joining us today is the mastermind behind this masterpiece who uh, not only sat through the entire seven and a half hours, but did his best to, to commentate it. Mr. Brent Hanks. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I don't you think doing? you're hungover, but I have a feeling maybe some others. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you ever seen somebody attack wine the way that Airball did yesterday? That was, that's, listen, for someone who drinks wine a lot, like, you know, Italian, I love my, I love my wine, I love my glass of wine. Sometimes I have a little too much. Chugging it like that is no bueno. That is not a good idea. A run, a wine look, look at that. That is just a just, pool. Oh is this the most God. disgusting oh. sight you've ever seen in your life? <laughs> Showman's the best, Showman man. just nailed it. Yeah, that is wow, disgusting. The chef's kiss. First of all, it's probably very good, uh, Super expensive, high-end wine. high-end wine. And you're just... I mean, you're disrespecting the wine. Yeah, that's like $1,000 bottle of wine that JRB brought from his apartment. Right, and he's just chugging it down like it's a fucking Guinness. <laughs> Show me. <laughs> this is absolutely grotesque. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking good. Honestly, I have no desire to watch the poker back, but I, I just want to like... I might just like listen to it like a podcast. Like when I'm in the gym, just listen to Hanks mm-hmm. and Shulman just riff through this nonsense. And we Brent, were kind of have- on one. Yeah, I mean, you, we, we, were, we were doing our thing. This guy is yeah. a Shul, Shulman was, Look at this guy, He Brent. dropped in when this he needed to drop in. This guy's a bad drinker. He's he there wasn't a ton right because, because you guys didn't cut out. Not stuff, you, but, you know, this, the whole this table is, this is this nonstop is chatter. But when we saw opportunities, we came in. You just feel it, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, I think yesterday was a good example of why uh, these productions aren't as simple as have table talk, have commentators, have poker. Uh, I, I think yesterday was a great example of it's very important to strike a balance based off of what that lineup is, right? Like, I didn't get to see it yet, but I imagine that there is a lot of argument for far, far, far less table talk, far, far more commentary, um, just because the behavior was so wild. I mean, it depends on what the table talk is. Sorry, far less laughter. There was a ton... <laughs> The first, like the first half, it, the, the laughter kind of died down after a while, at least from the viewer's perspective. I think the first couple hours, it was like, oh my God, this is exhausting because it was, it was like, um, it just, you know, it seemed forced. Like the laughter didn't seem real or genuine or, and, and as a viewer, there was so much laughter and back and forth. You didn't even hear what they were laughing at. And it, it didn't even seem so, um, that was like, yeah, kind of annoying. Once that died down, I thought the I thought it was smoother until the end when Nick obviously went way off the rails. But overall, I mean, I know people were like, you know, coming down hard on it, but I mean, I I particularly enjoyed watching the whole thing. Um overall, there were parts that definitely could have been changed. The, the laughter, the crazy laughter was out of this world and, you know, Nick at the end just being a belligerent drunk was uh, was too much, um, but overall, I think, you know, what was uh, what was your overall take uh, like, kind of in house sprint being front row with the the commentary? I think we got exactly what we sort of anticipated. Uh, I mean, uh, Nick saying during the show, you know, it's wild animals on high stakes poker. Uh, the Brad Willis article, I thought, really bundled up everything together that I read this morning over on poker.org. Um, it, 
it's what I thought was going to happen. Honestly, maybe even a bit tamer than yeah. than I thought what could happen. Nothing really came to a point where I thought, you know, Nick might, you know, you guys might want to fight or Nick wanted to fight you. It escalated when the, you wanted to kick the stakes up and uh, that was about it. But it, it, that is what happens when you put that sort of lineup together, a circus, if you will, as Rob would say, the clown show on a live stream and you just turn it loose. There, there's You don't have the ability to just edit and remove things and get rid of areas that, you know, might affect the show from a production perspective. So it's it's just another great example, too, as to why we do edit High Stakes Poker and No Gamble, No Future episodes. There's stuff that are that's said at the tables that, you know, oftentimes you remove to protect the player themselves for saying you know, that it could be out of line uh, mm. and obviously to protect Poker Go. It's just it's that's a part of the business. So we knew what we were getting into and it's a very rare occasion when we do this and it just so happened that, uh, you know, we ran it for seven hours and that was the result. I, I'm going to say something that, uh, may be a slightly surprising take from my point of view. Um, I don't think you got the game that we all signed up for. Uh, I, I think we got a very, very tame, unimpressive version of what we signed up for. Um, from my point of view, being in the game, it was a it was an absolute snooze fest from the poker sense. Uh, I've played a lot of hours with everybody at that table, and I collectively have never seen any of them play as tightly as they did yesterday. I noticed per I noticed persons right away. I was like, wow, he is just he's not playing any hands. He's playing tight. He's not going for bluffs. He's folding top pair or like I mean maybe he's just trying to play well, which take. Hey, you know, kudos to him, but um, it was not the Eric persons that we're used to. Or right, uh, that's just one example. Yeah, I, I think that was a good example. You know, Rob did his thing. Rob played how I expect him to usually play. JRB, mm, kind of. He he just didn't. Oh seem no, like no, he, was he, in the mood. he did his thing. When you go back and watch yeah, it, you see that. I, I heard the hands out of line. Yeah. yeah, he did his thing. Yeah, I heard the hands were out of line, but like he was just kind of like passively in there and. He didn't seem like he was in a big mood to to be like rocketing off or anything like that, which is fine. Like no, nobody has the expectation that like just because you're invited to this game, you have to play a right. certain way. But from my perspective, um, the the poker aside, which I believe to be incredibly tight, uh, the majority of the hands that went to showdown were just linen airball having aces. Um, I actually think that the. Uh, environment itself was far 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 less hostile and aggressive than i was preparing for personally like i know this is a weird stance to take but i was genuinely disappointed in how little i was attacked <laughs> I, i'm being dead serious like no, right right I, yeah, right you geared yourself up for for a couple wasn't weeks even, it wasn't even mm -hmm. that it, uh, i just don't like this fugazi twitter fingers bullshit where People act a certain way whenever they're behind the keyboard, knowing full and well that they're going to see these people in real life yeah. at some point in time. And then when we get there, it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to go hard at Berkey today. Like, why? We didn't call it truce. Say what you got to mm -hmm. say, man. Like, like, Doug was acting like almost pedestaling himself of like, I'm going to make the conscious choice to be the bigger man today. It's like, bro, that ship has fucking sailed. Yep. Like you drew my immediate right airball drew my immediate left. You two be need to like talk your shit like, and I'll handle it how I need to handle it. But that never happened and it was never going to happen. Yeah. Which left it wide open for Rob to then just spend the majority of the show giving Doug a, a real taste of his own medicine. And I said it to him a few times throughout the course of the, the show where Rob was just relentlessly dunking on him. I mean, just would not let CoinFlex stuff die. He would not let the, the troll videos die. He must have brought up the Daniel Negreanu dildo video a dozen times. Uh, he, he must have brought up that Doug showed a, a coin, which the irony is that like... That's only uh, that's only a sliver of what the actual coin flex thing was. Doug wasn't even shilling. I mean, he was shilling the coin. Don't get me wrong. Like that that also happened. 
but moreover, he was promoting this entire exchange that went insolvent. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a coin. Like, sure, maybe uh, a lot of his followers did not buy the coin because people don't but buy you have money on the ICOs exchange. that often. Yeah, right. but I bet a lot of them had fucking money on mm -hmm. the exchange. Even Nick and Lynn were, uh, they kept bringing up CoinFlex. That was the weird, that was the, that was the craziest thing of all. And that mm -hmm. was when I realized, uh, and Brent, you can, you can kind of give me your thoughts on this. But at that moment, whenever they decided to pile on with Rob, because it was clear that he had no interest in being against me and a lot of interest in uh, attacking Doug. When they started to pile on to Doug then all of a sudden, it became abundantly clear to me that there were just three children at a table full of adults. It was like being at Thanksgiving dinner where they let the kids leave the kiddie table. And now these two hyenas are just laughing at every word that Rob says because they want daddy's approval. And any chance that they get to double down and pile on on Doug... They just took it. And don't get me wrong, I fucking enjoyed that <laughs> immensely. I mean, like, to my Same. core, that, that, was, that was the sweetest gift I could have been given. I would have, I would have happily lost 200K to just sit through another eight hours of Doug getting dunked on. <laughs> but, you know what's... Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, what's, what's remarkable is that the night prior, uh, the three of us, me, Doug, and Rob, after the show finished on, uh, on Wednesday night, Rob wined and dined us in the, in the, you know, in one of the lounge areas, we had a couple glasses of wine, got Doug food, and we just talked for a while. And it was, it, you know, it was very civil, good conversation back and forth, talked about what we expected the next day. And then Rob comes in that's and what just Doug does said. that. Doug was, said that too. He's like, we were hanging out last night and yeah, then we went to dinner. That's true. It's true. Uh, you know, but what you were saying about, you know, Lynn and, and Airball sort of jumping on the, uh, the Doug bashing for a little while. It, Rob opened the door. I think very rarely does that door open where you're you're just like, wait, is it okay? Am I allowed to to bash Doug? I, I thought that you know no one does that to Doug. Uh, he'll make a video about you, you know that sort of thing. But Rob was doing it, so yeah. those guys got on board and like, all right, screw it, I, I, I'm in too. I'm going to get on here and, and and rip Doug for you know for the things that we don't like or the things that you know we think are, are ridiculous. So. I thought it was fair, and that was a good thing. You it's know, fair, but it, that, yeah. it's fair, and I agree with you. It was a great thing. It was it was a spectacle to watch. But they lost the plot. That the only yeah. reason they were there was to back up the attacks that they had against me. And outside of like just parroting a few things that maybe Doug said underhandedly towards me throughout the course of the match, they didn't say a fucking word. Not a I peep. think that I mean I'm I'm almost positive that Doug made a conscious choice to um you know to act the, the way he did last night and to to not go after you and let airball you know have the spotlight let him be the one that looks like a fool because they're like like i think doug just wanted didn't want to didn't want to look like he's already the bad guy and now he doesn't want to look even more like the bad guy i think so he's just like i'm gonna sit this I one out i think you're right then, yeah i think you're right but it's 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 insulting to the audience again. Like I've been saying this all along throughout all of this drama. Airball, Lynn, Doug, they insult their audience to a degree that is mind-numbing to me. They think that they're dealing with the stupidest people on earth who can't see through somebody who's being disingenuous. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, Doug made the conscious choice to not come after me because he understands, or at least I assume he understands, that it wasn't going to end well. It's just going to make him look like the asshole right. while there's four people at the table who are supposedly coming after me, right? So he makes a conscious choice not to, but it's disingenuous. He's literally tweeting an hour prior how much he hates me as a person or dislikes me as a person or whatever. And, you know, he tried to like make bullshitty small talk to ease the tension. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't want to do this, man. People were like commenting like, it's crazy to see that Airball was so obnoxious that by the end, Doug and Berkey became friends. Like, no, we fucking didn't. <laughs> Like no, Set the didn't. record straight, Burke. Yeah, like if just because I exchanged a couple of sentences about using a sauna and uh, you know a, a couple of things about working out or whatever, like I fucking hate this guy for all the reasons that Rob was dunking on him. I think he is a deplorable human being who spends all of his waking hours trying to find ways to make money off the backs of people he can basically treat like shit. Mm -hmm. And I've been on record saying this a hundred times and him having some bullshitty little small talk with me at the table isn't going to change my opinion of that in one, one degree the other way. Right. It's just like, you know, for me, I don't understand 
outside of, I guess, getting into this lineup. Maybe that's the end game. But I don't understand how you can be given that sort of platform with the opportunity to back up all of the messaging that you've put out there and just choose to deflect in a total other direction. And I'm, I'm directing a lot of that at, at Linen uh, Airball. You know, there were a couple points where um, very casually was like hinted at Lynn uh, to kind of like back up a statement or two. And she was just like, I'd appreciate if we don't. And, it, you know, those three were all talking in the bar area. I'm sure that they, you know, developed a strategy of like how they were going to approach this. You know, I know Lynn was on video saying like, I'm Switzerland and all of this. Yada, yada. It's like, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? There was, there was a month lead up to this where you were none of these things. None of you. Like you were all so loud and so boisterous and so emphatic about the things that I'm failing at. And then when given your opportunity to be in the arena and, you know, kind of had your, have your feet held to the fire, everybody just backs off and lets Rob steamroll over them. Just steamrolls them. Yeah. Which I love Rob. And... You know, just to make a comment about like how he wined and dined Doug the night before, like I don't want to speak for Rob. I don't know how he feels about all of us. I'm sure that he has a, a level of respect for Doug and everything else. But it's like, you know, there were a bunch of comments made where uh, they kept questioning if Doug is even in the high stakes arena, and I think that's insulting to him because he's an excellent player. He's world class, and obviously he's capable of playing high stakes. He has the money to do so. He's the one person that you respect as a player from the interview. Only as a player. <laughs> <laughs> only as a player. And, and to be fair, I was only talking about the four people who were attacking me. I, I, I love Jennifer. I love Rob. Um, and I love JRB. Yeah. Um, but the point I'm trying to arrive at is they kept like dogging on him saying he's not in the high stakes arena. And my takeaway from that is like, even though he can afford to be, and even though he has the ability to be, he's not a part of that collective. And Rob treated him as an outsider who pokes fun at that arena who makes videos about a casino owner who misplays a hand, you know, who, you know, spends a lot of time dragging somebody like me. One of the, the only comments I made to Doug throughout the entire set show was at the end of the night, he's bemoaning being stuck in this game. He's like, how am I stuck in this game? Like all this ridiculous antics are happening around. He's like, how am I stuck in this game? And I looked at him and I said, I just want you to bear in mind that when you spent six years making videos about how awful of a poker player I am, this is the game that I was playing 150 times a year. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's a perspective that somebody who came up grinding online will just never understand. It's like, it's going to look different to you, man. It's going to look a lot more foreign, the things that I do and the things that I have confidence in, because this is my environment, right? Look around, <laughs> look at, look at what I'm dealing with. It's an insane asylum. <laughs> <laughs> they were running the do same asylum. you think that Doug, I, I mean, I, I just want to go back to, what you're pointing out, you know, your, your disdain towards him, you don't like him. And, and, you know, maybe that's the case for him as well towards you where it is, this is deep and this is dirty, but I mean, was that an opportunity where, you know, he's going to be fine, cordial, let's play poker. We'll have fun. We'll make our quick witted comments here and there. Uh, you, you, you didn't want that out of him. You wanted him to be sort of a dick to I, you. I, I personally, personally speaking, I just want people to be their authentic selves. So, like, yeah. that's why I think the airball shtick is so bothersome to me. Because I don't think he's authentically that way. I think authentically, he's probably a nice dude who found a whole fuck ton of money. I don't know how. I don't know if it was given to him. I don't know if he got lucky in some sort of deal. Whatever. But he found a fuck ton of money. And that took higher priority over him being his authentic self. I think he's an awkward 26-year-old who doesn't know who he truly is. And he lives this duality of being this cocksucker for attention and then genuinely being a nice dude at his that's, core. That's what um, Andy Stack said in, uh, in Melissa's space, his Twitter space last night. He, you know, he, he came on and he talked and he said, listen, I used to play with him before anybody knew who he was. He was just a normal guy who played poker. And then all of a sudden, you know, like he started playing higher and then he started being this character and then the attention came to him. And then he like, was feeding off the attention. It's like, well, if I get all this attention, I'm going to keep acting this way and keep acting this way. And then it's evolved into what it was right. last night. Right. And I think the opposite of Doug. I don't think Doug is a nice person in his core. Mm -hmm. I think his authentic self is what we see in the YouTube videos. 
I've been around the industry. I, I disagree with that. I don't That's think fine. so. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome to he, a different opinion. He does this. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why he creates so many videos and creates that content down that path and down that lane because it simply works. Well, that, that's he, who that. But that's not who he is. I just think he understands the, the ingredients and what what it is, what you do, and then combine that with his. He is a funny but, person. But how, how much experience do you have with him outside of? just organizing games and watching and that's, his YouTube. That's fair. Very little. I mean, very little, uh, you know, we'll talk. We've always had a good relationship talking about poker, you know, even like he's asking me about, you know, my family, kids, that like, little things like that. I'm not saying that makes you a good person, but it, in, in my mind, it's like he's saying things that are very polite, very right. You know, no, half these players don't even know why I have kids or family or sure. anything like, that. but Doug sure. does, you know, and like little things like that, that I'll notice. I just, I, I, do, I think he found something that works with YouTube uh, and he does it very, very well. But when you put him in the live arena, as you've pointed out, and you see who he is in person, I think that's kind of where you're meeting the real Doug. What Daniel met when they played in high stakes feud, there was no feud. In fact, I don't think anyone knows this. Maybe Doug's on record talking about this, but it, he apologized to Daniel before they played. And that's probably why the match was sort of friendly. They, they had a handshake moment. And said, "Listen, man, I'm you know I'm just I'm sorry about some of these attacks. Um, they, they, I was way out of line, and uh, you all, know I, I but that it's all, kind of stuff. It's all kind of like bullshit because then he just continues to do it to either the same person or to, a, to the next person, right? And then, right. He, and then what is he going to do? He's just going to apologize to that. He's going to apologize to Berkey and say, you know what? I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have came after your bit. I shouldn't I, have I did know, this. Also, you know what? Let's be cordial. Let's be, let's be friends. And then, uh, you know, the next day he goes after somebody else or somebody else's business. Like the thing is with Doug is like, okay, yeah, maybe he's a nice guy here. He's this, but like, if, if that, yeah, that's what works on, you said that's what works on his YouTube channel. But like, if he knows that's what works and he does it and he understands what he's doing to people and he still does it, that goes to, that shows his character. That shows who he is deep down inside. Yeah. No matter what, no matter what he, he acts that. like or if, I, how, how well often he right. says, Hey Brent, how are your yeah. kids? Like, like I, if, I, I understand that Brian, right? you very well you're right. But he, and he also strikes me as the kind of guy and, and Berkey, you know, when, when I don't know the lodge stuff that came out, when you go after something that's his and it affects, you know, the employees and, you know, he actually, it, what, I'm sure it's true. He, he told this, he, he spoke about it on air, you know, employees were upset about comments made about the state of Texas in general and, and the problems that are wrong there that boy, that Berkey pointed out having never been at the lodge and, and having never been at various properties. And, you know, maybe there were some things that were said that were unfair that Doug took offense to. But being a business Here, owner, here's the thing. And he stuck right. up for. I, I have to push back on a lot of this stuff. So yeah. uh, I'm speaking strictly to authentic, authenticity, and I think that this kind of doubles on Brian's point. It doesn't matter how you treat certain individuals, especially whenever they have something to offer you. It matters on the overall body of work. How you treat, you know, the average the average Joe that you come in contact with who can't really offer you anything in return. And my take is it's very easy to judge somebody who's shitty publicly the way Doug is and then also surrounds himself by people that I also think are very shitty guys like JMO guys like Fee these guys are all completely I, I'm, I don't want to use a choice word here but like they're <laughs> they're just like not nice people right they're, they're very much always looking for EV they're trying to do the things that will allow them to bolster themselves etc um, with regard to the lodge stuff I posted the receipts I posted all of the timestamps from that podcast, as well as the couple of retractions that we had the following day after DMing with Doug back and forth. I'm proud of that episode. I think that that is one of the most comprehensive episodes that we've done regarding tough issues in the poker community that we face, security being a number one priority, especially in an unregulated market like Texas. I'm sorry if there are people who are working there or playing there that didn't like the messaging behind it, but big picture, we're looking out for the collective of trying to get this thing in a positive direction. Not, I, I was, It wasn't an attempt to tear down the lodge or tear down Texas poker. It was an attempt to shine a light on something that we're turning a blind eye to simply due to the fact that it's more convenient that way. And that's my biggest issue with this pushback right now. He waited seven months to show issue with what I said on that podcast. Why? Because it benefits him. Right. And that's where I'm saying it's so inauthentic and all of this inauthentic inauthenticity 
similar to like what we saw yesterday where he comes with the hi happy guy let's make let's make nice type of attitude it's bullshit because whenever we don't have to look each other in the face or sit six inches apart at the table he'll jump on a podcast and try to eviscerate me right he'll have no problems calling into this show right now and you know standing up for uh his character and all the things that i'm currently attacking but when put in that moment when rob young calls his character into question calls his actions into question you know challenges all of the things that he's being judged by he shrunk he turned into that little kid who's being bullied again and tried to deflect with humor as best he could but it was relentless and and he knew it was unrelenting he made many comments throughout the course of the show of like i thought this was going to be about berkey what's going on right and when I was saying I, I don't I don't want to speak for Rob uh, with regards to why he treated Doug a certain way and me another way, what I was hinting at is that Doug truly is not in that arena. He's not a part of that community, but he dicks on it all the time. And the people in that community are offended by it. And this is their pushback. Rob was their spokesman yesterday. He doesn't do it to me because I am a part of that community, whether Doug likes it or not, whether people think I deserve to be there or not. Jeremy, Jeremy and I were trying to trade stories and getting talked over by Nick Airball. We've been playing for 10 years at the highest stakes, right? Like this is, this is so night and day and so foreign to somebody who is only concerned with bettering their own narrative. And to me, that's what yesterday was a culmination of, was exposing a bunch of people who were trying to platform themselves through someone else by simply you know, dragging them and making them look less than in an arena where it's just up to the court of public opinion. And I think they all lost, not because of their character flaws necessarily, but because they all showed up the most inauthentic version of themselves, right? They all showed up meek and quiet and fake laughing and deflecting humor. You know what I mean? It was none of the the knives that they've been throwing on social media for the last four and a half weeks, which is what everybody fucking expected last night. Fair. I, I mean, I can't, I can't counter any of that. That, that is, uh, I will say uh, when Rob did come after Doug yeah, and he brought up coin flex and he brought up everything else, it, you would have to admit Doug handled it quite well. He, Absolutely. He, his, a lot his, of it. he did the patch stuff. You his know, skin is I, very thick. I agree. Yeah. 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 He handled it very well. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Um, I I kind of want to pivot a little bit off of that because uh, I guess there were some moments to talk about, man. Like, let's get let's get into shit. Again. I mean, like you saw it. Like, it's weird because we have such different perspectives, right? Lamana watched the full the full thing, right? right? He he watched. I watched it. You played it. And he commented exactly, on it. exactly. So it, like. It, yeah, he's it, the full third party. So right. from from my perspective, like it was slow. There weren't a lot of big pots. Nobody was really getting involved. No, not many big bluffs were ran. Anything along those lines. Um, but these dynamics were like strange. I've have you ever seen Eric Person play that tight? No, but I also think you know it's not like he's been on a huge winning streak on all these, on sure. all these streams, you Very know, uh, he told the story early on about how he came on the first show, the first taping and just he had food poisoning the night before came in, mm. played for an hour and dusted off 700. Right. I mean, yeah. and, and Eric loves to be on streams. He loves to be on the biggest shows and get the views. If you're continually going to come on shows and lose, you're just going to be viewed as maybe not a great player. And I think he wants to be the great player that he knows he is. Right. Yeah. So I actually thought he, he played well for what it's worth. I'm not even, he played good. Yeah. yeah he, no, that's what I said. He, he made, he made some really good folds where like everyone yeah. was shocked. Right. When he, when he folded like top pair of Kings and top pair of tens. And it was like, it was like, wait, this isn't the guy that, that we're used to, but like kudos to him because he, he is trying to play well. And, and it, it showed a little bit last night. Right. Yeah. I, I, I thought he played, um, pretty well i didn't get to see his whole card so like i don't know just how tight he played um but i did get to see for whatever reason people sent me a lot of screenshots how insanely tight lynn played uh preflop especially nick opened the button she just folded king queen off in the small blind she folded like yeah she folded like ace, ace three ace suited. three suited like in the cutoff to like a single open raise yeah a couple times a couple times she folded like a suited ace like 
like a clear like continue hand that, that she just i think that's another case too with lynn where she wants to be recognized as is a respected you know good high stakes player but there, then you shouldn't fold those hands. Don't <laughs> fold those hands. <laughs> right. right well, yeah. I know. Yeah. But you're right. <laughs> don't fold those hands. But I, I just, I think right. she got up money. Probably very happy with that. And, and again, I could be way off. Maybe, maybe there's plenty more reasons for her to be folding in those spots. But um, I think she just wanted to book a winner, man. And she was up a lot of money after getting that double up. Um, she got JRB for whatever reason to put in five bets with, you know, King six suited. <laughs> and Jamie sure. called up the rest. I know. It, he almost did. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just, it's one of those things where when the, when the lights are on, the cameras are rolling, especially on a show like high stakes poker, you really don't want to look bad. Right. And you no. just want to play well. And I, I get what you're saying where that's no, not I get that too, well. Brent. I, yeah. I get that too. Yeah. Like, like I've never been, I've never played in a spotlight like that ever. So I don't know how I would react. But, I, but I can, she has, and she put in, right. you know, 200,000 with queen 10 suited back five bet jamming. So uh, let, let's not go too far. Like right. these hands aren't mixed between calls and folds. I, I think you know, it's a result pure of continues. that number. You know what yeah, I mean? Perhaps, I think it's like perhaps. still maybe licking the wounds and figuring out, okay, how do I adjust for these, these big spots going forward? It's not like you're playing yeah. high stakes poker games weekly, monthly, you know, right, it might right, happen right. once a year, twice a year if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that that's, that's a fair observation. Um, did you notice anything else like being in the booth? Uh, like uh, you got to see all the whole cards. I, I, again, I haven't gotten the chance to watch it yet. Did you see anything else uh, that you found to be interesting one way or the other? Not really. And, and I think I heard, you know, you mentioned this earlier about how the game didn't play maybe as big as you anticipated. Oh Believe yeah. It or not, the two, four, five game. Yeah. It, even from seasons past where we'd be filming these, these exact stakes, the hundred came in by and you're, you know, we're filming six, seven hours a day. And we're lucky if we get two, really lucky if we get three episodes from that one particular day. Right. So if you go back and you feel, you know, you filter through how many hundred K pots, 200 K pots, 300 K pots actually happen. It's very mm -hmm. few. Yeah, yeah. So the games just typically kind of play very similar to what you saw and what you were a part of yesterday. And of course you played the day before. Yeah. So it's, well, I thought it was much bigger. I think the, that was different. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the other game, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot more of a loose environment. I think the tension hurt the action, to be quite frank. And yeah, I think I, it, I, I think it was partially because uh, the tension was never really addressed, right? So it's like it could have gone one way or the other. It could have been like a massive action game where uh, you know the tension doesn't really ever. Uh, come to a head because we're just boiling inside or it could be a, a slow game where everybody's just like firing insults at one another but it somehow landed so, like directly in between which yeah. i found to be very odd uh you know i had a lot of i had a lot of things in my head that i had planned to steer conversation one way or the other should i get attacked long enough that i felt the need to defend myself but it just never happened. You know, it was like, uh, I'm just going to kind of sit here and let these guys keep digging their hole. The, the big thing to me was that in spite of how much laughter was taking place, there was very little, there was very little on the, on the funny meter that was actually, uh, kind of getting thrown out. It was a lot of swings and misses uh, as far as I was concerned. Rob was very, very crisp. Right. And I think that caught a lot of people off guard because, the the defense for all of that was going to be an attack versus me not attack versus rob you know so it becomes a little a little difficult whenever all of a sudden coin flex is getting brought up and you're not about to uh redirect that to something solve for why related but instead like you're dealing with a casino owner it's like Kirk, what, you, what the fuck you almost cracked a smirk when uh when nick started impersonating doug <laughs> You like? Yeah. I was like, oh, like, oh man! I just found Nick it to almost, be almost made Berkey smile. Like it was like right there. Well, I just found it to be so <laughs> ironic and hilarious. That he's going after Doug, and yeah, just it, like it's, yeah, it's just like what? Right? <laughs> like what? What is going on here? Um, and there was a point. Uh, you know, Guapo can roll the clip here in a second, but there was a point towards the end where, you know, Nick was somehow challenging everybody to rolls heads up again <laughs> and doug was of course trying to get action and it's yeah, like whoa, whoa buddy you're his coach why don't you relax let me let me get a little more action here yeah. and he tried to get me to um you know up the stakes or whatever and it just resulted in like if i'm this guy i would be so fucking embarrassed by this 60 seconds of, of televised poker that is certain 
to make the cut. Set him in, let's kick it off. What I'm saying is, anytime why are you so you scared to, to set him in and kick it up? I, I just don't want the commitment, man. Anytime you want to play, Such we can just pussy. play. Then let's kick it up and set him in. Let's play. Do you, 1,000, 2,000. Let's go. A million men. I mean, like, so objectively, I've watched the hands. Objectively, I'm horrible. Objectively, <laughs> at this cool. point, you have the best of it. So fuck okay. it, let's kick it off! I've seen the hands. I'm, I'm well aware. I've seen the hands. Let's kick it off! I want to play bigger! We need to bring so, back. Let's so get back to the In, in my opinion, Jeremy, oh. and I say this he as someone so that will not be okay? taking further action. And then he won't play bigger with me. I feel like to not take it It's is fucking like, soft! It's like he buy, he talks like, about he covered me for five minutes and he buys it 100k. It's soft as fuck! That, that's the... Crazy part is I've buy covered, in more, Berkey, I've or don't fucking like, talk to me. Buy in more. You're a little bitch. You play a 30k <laughs> stack. You don't get a fucking talk to me ever. I literally have covered. You play a 30k stack. Don't fucking oh, talk. I've to literally me. covered. Get more wine. <laughs> get more wine right now. <laughs> I've literally covered him for 80% of the match, and I buy him oh for the minimum. You can buy him for 30,000. No, I buy him for 100, and I've covered him for about 80% of the match. What did you, what, what did you have in the? So, like, what's the take in the booth there? While wow, well, that's kind of... Is that, like, more of what we expected, I think, for the entirety of the match? I think so. I thought the show was going to start off with something like that. You know, yeah. Nick coming to you really hard. And then it finally, maybe once the wine first started to kick in, uh, that that's when the gloves came off for, for airball. Um, also, Doug definitely hedging. He wants your side of that action. Maybe that's why that. he's so nice, <laughs> yeah. you know, because he wants the, the stakes to go up and he wants a little taste of Berkey. Right. For the heads up match on the bigger bet, but um, yeah, I, I mean that was that was something. It, can you also? I mean, there was a chance this game was going to happen after the show. But... Fuck, man, I'm so annoyed. Uh, and honestly, maybe I'm not because I came home and I I crashed immediately. I was so much more tired than I realized. But uh, Airball afterwards was like begging to play uh, heads up, and I was like, okay. He's like, all right, five uh, five hundred one k two fifty min, and I'm like. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll get a table. Like, we can do this off the challenge. And, uh, you know, just play till you want to quit tonight. And, like, whatever happens, Okay, so happens. you accept the challenge. You're ready to go. He's offered it up. You're gonna, you've got a table booked. Yeah, I mean, so, like, what we saw in that clip there is what I was trying to do afterwards. Uh, like, I'm happy to play this guy now until forever. I just don't want some sort of hourly commitment, right? Like, when you're in Vegas and you want to play heads up, just call me. And, you know, we'll play. Like, I don't, I don't understand this notion that it has to be this like timed event that has a beginning and an end. I, I get it. He wants to probably build like marketing and publicity around it. And there's some maybe grander plan there, but like, I just want to play cards, man. So I got table two, uh, cause Keating's game was in Ivy's and, uh, I sat there for like 30 minutes. I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? And I finally text him. And he's like, I'm at dinner with JRB. And I was like, all right, I'm not waiting 90 minutes for you to be done. And he's like, fuck you, bitch. We play on my time. And I was like, I'll see you Sunday yeah. <laughs> on my time. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, the, ma the match never happened after the fact. I think he, Lynn, Brown Ballo, JRB, and uh, Doug all got dinner somewhere. I don't fucking know. But um, thank God he got some food in him. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I would want to play him heads up drunk. He seems like he somehow gets tighter. <laughs> I Except don't for know the ace that. deuce on the last hand of the night. I, th I think it was just camera time. But the aces. He put in $50,000. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yeah, he was definitely not playing tighter at the end of the night. He was starting to go bananas. Yeah, he just opened 25K with aces. <laughs> and, and JRB somehow falls for it. I know. I, know I mean... Honestly, yeah. I, I told him afterwards, I was like, not knowing Nick, I would fall for that too. Like, the yeah. shove's just good. It's true. Uh, I mean... It's a 1600 straddle. He opens for fucking mm -hmm. 15x, and Jeremy only has like 125k or whatever. And like, he's blacked out drunk. Yeah, it just seems like a decent spot to take a pair to the face. Yeah. Uh, but knowing what I know about airball, it's just like, man, this is a good fucking hand. <laughs> like, and the thing was, he didn't... This is what nobody, nobody is going to pick up on at home. Because, you know, you don't get all of the audio necessarily. But he did not mean to make it 25K. He said something about 25K. And they're like, is that a bet? They He's were, like, yeah. And he threw exactly. it right in. Exactly. They were having a total separate I, I conversation. That. I caught that. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what the conversation was. But he was having a completely separate conversation with Lynn, maybe, or mm -hmm. something along those lines. And somebody asked him a question or whatever. And he was like, 25K. As in, like, that's what it would take for me to do whatever thing it was god damn it chauncey 
Oh my God. He just shredded my thigh. Uh. God damn. I'm, I gotta be bleeding. Um, <laughs> get out of here, man. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. How can I love and hate something so much? It's like air ball. <laughs> <laughs> hair ball. hair ball. Hair ball over uh. here. Uh, but yeah, so like, and then he just like rolled with it, right? And he was just like, oh, fuck it. 25K seems outrageous and I have aces. Why not? <laughs> right. So he just did, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would have, even though at that moment it was annoying because uh, like he was so drunk and so loud, uh, it's, it's, I will say it's frustrating to not be able to get a word out. I, the, so the one point where of the whole match where you just I mean you kept your composure like the entire time it was very impressive very classy and um the the I I think w I know what you're alluding to because it was the one moment where I thought okay Berkey's gonna snap he's gonna snap you were trying to tell a story about how JRB uh, oh. you know won all this money and like the, the circumstances of it and you yeah. started with like okay well I lost my seat because I reached my 500k. Uh, stop loss and then and then airball just went nuts you five hundred dollars stop loss if i had a five hundred dollars stop loss i just quit it but and then you're like and you're trying to tell a story and you just kept going on and on and just just screaming over top of you and i'm like this is this is where this is where Berkey just loses it because i would have lost it i'm like and you just somehow kept your composure and just continued with the story until he just finally shut up and you were able to i get think Berkey out. just but, did a great job at letting sort of those spot you know the, yeah. in those moments letting them hang themselves it's a lot hey, harder like, than you think man uh, it, shout it, out yeah, to just, uh lee jones for a hundred dollars hundred dollars lee thank you he said uh matt you were a model of maturity in class last night poker could not have had a better ambassador for those eight hours and lord how we needed that so yeah thanks thanks lee and and well said He's yeah. very generous. You know, uh, Lee yes. was part of the, the... He was very generous last night, too. This, he, he was. He's we, a very we generous man. Thank you. $600 of donations last night. Lee did? No, I, I oh. mean, just told people oh, yes. sending oh, money. Yeah, to I, I don't him, know yeah. where that money goes. Right. I have no idea. It goes uh, to Poker Go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys oh, got like 75% of it. Didn't, didn't, yeah, someone said you, you, uh, they, they wanted to buy you drinks, so, so uh, you better be getting a bonus. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Nick and I will see all of that. A yeah. little, little, little bump in the pay, next week's paycheck. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that moment was definitely frustrating. Uh, having the patience to sit through it was tough. But I think what allowed me not to snap is that I know what the high-stakes poker product is. And those mm -hmm. stories are the fucking backbone of it. Right. Right? It's like, Jeremy... Jeremy is quite capable of talking about himself, but that shouldn't be the way that it goes, right? It's like we all have enough history together that being able to share some war stories and, you know, what goes on behind the glass, that's what people are tuning in for. Sure, the blood, the big pots, that's all nice. And that's, that's what I can tell just eats at the, the air balls and the lens of the world who are trying so desperately to be important and relevant, but have no, no time in the game. Right, they they've only been here for a brief second, so mm -hmm. they don't really have any of these stories to lean on and be like, "Oh man, I can remember the time that JRB ran a hundred thousand into five and a half million, and was suddenly like rich overnight." And it's like to have that story st stepped on over and over and over again yeah. throughout the course of it. It's like it's just, I mean, obviously it makes an Airball look stupid, which is great, but <laughs> it's it's a poor viewing experience and i think that's where like a lot of the twitter feedback started to come in of like you know this was unwatchable yada yada, yada which mm -hmm. i i don't necessarily agree with i think when we see the polished product and brent you could speak to this a little bit more than me since you saw every hand but i imagine when you see the polished product it's going to be very very entertaining so this this exact um last night is also being uh edited down into uh, uh episodes yeah, we'll re we'll redo those with uh, with AJ Benza and Nick Schulman in post. Gotcha. So it'll be a part okay. of season eleven, mm -hmm. and then yeah. I'm sure it'll be you know three episodes that we'll get out of that. Right, and, and season eleven is going to end up being like between anywhere between fifteen and twenty total episodes. It'll mm -hmm. be huge. I heard there were some takes where people you know on Twitter or whatever were saying last night that like. Oh my God, you know, po high stakes poker, it's this prestigious thing, which it is. And, and, you know, you're ruining the brand by doing this and you're ruining that. Like, I, I don't think people realize this, this, this is, I think was, you know, like a one-off. 
right? It, it yeah. was kind of, it was kind of, it was a one, this is not what like high stakes poker is going to evolve into. I, I don't think, I think this is a, a kind of like a, you know, a once in a lifetime kind of thing where, where, where all this beef is happening. All these things are happening throughout the poker community and you were able to, you know, wrangle everybody up and get them to a table and play. It was a perfect storm of events going right. on between yeah, Berkey, yeah. Airball, mm -hmm. Lynn, Person, Doug, you know, and, and everyone also just being willing to get in the ring and play. Right. So when that when that came together, yeah, it was a no brainer to stream it because mm -hmm. it, it made sense. If we if we just filmed it and turned it into episodes that comes out after the World Series, everyone hit, will have forgotten about all of this and it right. just wouldn't make sense and then it's somehow worse you know yeah, uh, yeah. i agree with you it, it, it just made sense and it also the people with those takes like oh it's sacrilegious is how could you do this to the brand to high like they're treating this like it's worse than than fucking black friday you know <laughs> it, it, like, <laughs> this is a poker stream yeah. that, that we threw together and, and let everyone watch and enjoy or not enjoy but yet even if you didn't enjoy you probably watched the whole thing anyway i mean that's just the reality of it. it yeah it, this is not going to damage high stakes poker that's a very very silly take uh, that you know the season will be exactly how we were with season 10 aj nick cut down edited everything will be great yeah. you know just as that show is yeah I, I think that you took a lot of unfair criticisms uh mm -hmm. yesterday I, I think like any <laughs> any showrunner worth a grain of salt that wouldn't put this lineup together if given the opportunity is not doing their job <laughs> right Right. Um, but with that said, as far as your expectations go of of this lineup put together, did you did you feel like they were met mostly? And then second follow up to that is if you could do it all over again, uh, are there are there any clear adjustments that you would make? Uh, I didn't really have, you know, expectations. I, I thought we'd get this the viewership that we received. We had a ton on YouTube. We had a lot that a lot of people are loyal subscribers to, to poker go. We also ran it on poker go as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it was free there. You could just log right. into the app. Right. We had, we had, you know, thousands of viewers there as well. So, um, you know, the numbers came in pretty certain that that was going to hit. And, um, if I made any changes, what would I do? Um, I don't, I don't know if I'd make any changes that that was, that was the crew that I wanted to assemble. You know, obviously yeah. we got JRB in there. We weren't sure he was going to be in. He was kind of hit or miss last second. Uh, and then Lynn, courtesy of you, you know, you were so open to letting us pour gasoline on, on the fire. You embraced it in a way you said, it's, it's just more money for me really. And, and it just made sense for you. So, um, you know, I, I no, I, I don't have any regrets uh, on the lineup. It, it is something that I think, I wouldn't mind testing again for the next season of high stakes poker. Perhaps there is a theme that we could put together that we could test and we can try. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. to be so much animosity. It doesn't necessarily have to contain the current drama found on social media, but maybe there's an overall theme of, you know, uh, high stakes poker legends of the show that we'd want to put together. I don't know if it'd be as entertaining. I don't know if it's as watchable is what mm. we saw last night, but it just depends on, on everyone's perspective. So many people love this about a show and others hate it, right? It, it, the audience is, is uh, it's very diverse as far as what people want to see and what they want to hear. Yeah. I think uh, from my point of view, I would say, you know, I kind of already said this, but I, I think it was a little bit of a letdown with the energy that people brought to the game. Like, you know, Eric didn't say a word to me, uh, which I did not expect that to be the case. Uh, I really thought he would at least take the opportunity to kind of clear up the Patrick stuff. Um, and you know, again, like Airball, you know, he he did a little bit of his thing. Doug did a little bit of his thing. Uh, Lynn to me was like a big disappointment. Just didn't say a word, played super nitty, won some money. I think knowing what we know now, this game is 10x better if it's six max. Um, I just think like the forced play, I think the game gets bigger naturally. Uh, you know, there's nowhere to hide. I, I thought there was a lot of hiding taking place due to the fact that it was eight max yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, especially, and especially by the way, with the way, you know this, we had no intent of, of going eight. Right. No, no, I know. It, it just and, became and a matter so, of yeah. how many people can we pile into one lineup <laughs> that, uh, kind of shared the same beef. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The, the, those are all very, very good points. And and all that being said, I, I I know, you know, people trying to hide. We didn't see the big pots that we expected. Or from your perspective, 
it, it, this is still their money. You know, they, they yeah. can sit yeah. there and they're putting up a hundred grand at a minimum on the table. If they want to play tighter than usual, so be it. It's, it's, it's their money. You know, we can't, we can't say, Hey, can you please play splashier? You know, <laughs> right. A yeah. little bit more reckless. That, yeah. That's just, uh, I would just never criticize. Hostile. Yeah. I would never criticize people for playing their money. However they choose to. Uh, I, I, that's why I kind of like try to shift the, the direction towards the structure of the game. Because we can always create better game structures that will will force uh, looser play, I think. Um, and in a lot of instances, like you as a game runner, you just don't have to because you get the right personalities together. They're just going to be way too loose and way too splashy on their own right. Like it could be eleven handed sometimes, and some of those lineups would just play like maniacal. Uh, I imagine like the lineup the day before would have been something along those lines. We had man, I mean. <laughs> without spoiling too much of the season, but you know, we played really big the first two days. And I think I told you this, Andrew Robel did a really nice job assemb assembling his guys and, mm. and, and keeping people coming in and out. But we played two days of 500 K men uh, with where what, the blinds were one K two K. I mean, that was just, that was massive. Yeah. When, when those episodes come out, that'll be a, you'll never see anything like that on high stakes poker. It's the biggest game of all time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty exciting. I heard there was a lot of bloodshed. So, a lot of blood. Uh, that, that's that, that's definitely going to be uh, tough to top, I think, which is something to look forward to. When do you think that uh, these these final productions will be done around the end of uh, WSOP? I think, yeah, I think the plan is is going to be let you know we're going to finish season ten that's airing right now. Finish no gamble no future season two, and then WSOP that's its own thing. High stakes duel we announced last night as well. That's happening. Uh, Jesus, I think that's next week, May uh, or two weeks, May eighth and May 9th. That's round one, round two of Daniel Negreanu versus Eric Person. They're playing a 100K match and a 200K match. Mm -hmm. And then you got Sean D playing Mike Matisau for uh, the undercard, as we're calling it. That'll be live on May 5th nice. on YouTube free. Um, but so anyway, once we get through all that, then we hit the World Series. That's, you know, 47 straight days of streaming. And then post WSOP, that gives our editors time to, to put all these shows together. And then we'll start to roll out no gamma, no future, high stakes poker. And I think we'll do it simultaneous, like what we're doing right now, where you'll see the brand new season of that show on one day, then you get high stakes poker the other day. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what might have come of yesterday's episode that uh, you could possibly parlay into uh, a future themed uh, show of some sort. We may have just seen the end of Airball G last night. Uh, I think it might have happened. Here and are stuck to said stay a little I don't have any gone. Gone. The, uh, yeah, mainly talking We'll play. But we don't I'm her that. boss. Oh. I tell her what she does. Good luck with that one, buddy. Lynn, care. you're not allowed to leave. I'm done at 10. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a 10.30 flight. I have to go right now. If you, no, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> you're, you're in an Uber with me, home. <laughs> How about this? Yeah. Airball Ubers you don't go home back and forth you. from Los Angeles. To everyone to out there? Oh, Listen, this guy <laughs> is wild. Um, I mean, I can't make it up. Washington I'd honestly, yeah. I'd never seen him play. Okay, don't do that. Anymore. You know, do I, whatever you want. We just want I, you to be I happy. I get it. Thoughts? I, I understand. agree with but one thing i will say about her is she's an absolute bulldog and isn't gonna stand to be talked to like that mm -hmm. uh that that might just be the final episode of the airbology oh no guapo was muted no you're good no nope. chat said it was muted we heard it they might not have heard it okay well that would be unlucky uh the long and short of it was that uh we were talking about getting the game going afterwards. Oh, okay. Never mind. Everybody you else were is muted, that. I think, when you came back on, Matt. Oh, uh, I was muted. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to say was... See, what had happened was... Uh, no, what I was trying to say was I've known Lynn for a very long time, and though we may have our differences and uh, she may have some character flaws I don't agree with, uh, she's not going to be talked to like that. And I think we may have just seen the end of, of the Airbology regime which is unfortunate it was a it was a great mm -hmm. great content production house while it lasted <laughs> i know i'm gonna miss that laugh so you think she was genuinely pissed off yeah she happened. looked she looked pissed absolutely fucking yeah. lootly yeah. <laughs> as, mm. as as someone who's been on the other side of that anger before yes uh that was not a comfortable uber ride home does does airball really uber back and forth yeah, he was trying to explain this to me when we were playing Heads Up, and I didn't care. What, what, could, what does that cost? 500 bucks. Why? 
Why not just take Jet Suite X for cheaper? Uh, he thinks it's inefficient. How? Exactly. Stop. Don't, don't, don't try to logic your way around it. <laughs> I just, the, like, the only thing that makes any level of sense is that you can't catch a flight at 1 a.m., but right. you could catch an Uber at 1 a.m. Yeah. So, like, sure, I, I get that. But you could also just sleep for three hours mm-hmm. and then catch a flight at 5. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's kind of I mean, like, could just be afraid to fly, right? No, That's no, no. He flies. Oh, he does fly. Yeah. Uh, he'll fly one way and Uber the other. I don't. Okay. Don't, don't ask me, man. <laughs> does he, does he, uh, does he not drive? No, no, there's no way he has a license. People in LA, I don't think do a ton. Well, no, I mean, I LA guess, they I, do. Yeah, I guess it depends on like New York. I guess New- it depends on who yeah. you are, but, uh, no, he's very proudly does not drive, mm. uh, as he claims. Um, yeah, it's weird because like, obviously <laughs> I don't think anybody with any rational thinking would ever say like, oh yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Uber and you get shit done in the back seat. Like, yeah, no, that makes like like as if there's something you could get done in the back seat of a car that you couldn't get done on a forty five minute flight. Right. Uh yeah, I don't know. It's 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 sheer insanity as far as I'm concerned. Um Yeah, what if you get an Uber driver who wants to talk to you the entire time? Right? <laughs> and you're stuck for three and a half hours. Also, just like who accepts these rides? I mean, sure, it's 500 bucks, but, like, then you're just fucking in California. Right, that's what I don't understand. Like, I mean, I guess maybe maybe it's worth, maybe it's, it's probably more of a charge than... I'm sure it is. Right? But, like, like, you know, 500 bucks. So, uh, you know, you talk to most Uber drivers. I'm sure that they... They probably don't make $500 in a... In a um, 500 miles well, like in like In, like, a seven-hour... Uh, seven, like they work for seven hours. They drove around for seven yeah, yeah, hours. Yeah, that part's probably They probably true. don't make five hundred dollars. So but like, you have to think about the. There and back. You have to the, think the about the gas to get there the and gas, back. Yeah, that what it does to your car. Exactly, gas maintenance, yeah, all right. those costs. Right? I mean, so it's, it's more it's like, the same thing as driving around town all day. Well, that's the thing. It's it's, it's not a matter. Less it's gas. not a matter of do they make it over seven hours. It's a matter of do they make it over five hundred miles. Right? Like, are they making a dollar a mile otherwise? Because if so, then this is insane. Well, time matters as well. Uh, you know, kind of, it's like, it's like, instead of like hoping that you get like, uh, hoping that you get, uh, you know, dinged to, to drive people around or around the city, you, you just lock up like driving, you know, for seven hours, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It would I make can, sense I mean, to me if you could like, you know, yeah. drive someone back there's with probably, you. I'm sure there's pros and cons and then some people. I mean, people, I can definitely Some see people con- probably accept and some don't. Yeah, the convenience of not having to go to the airport, not having to check your bags, not having to do all this shit. Like, if you got the money, I guess, and you don't mind sitting in a car Come for on, long, bro. Dude, airports suck. That's why you go to Jet Suite X. You yeah. don't go to an airport. Yeah. Okay, well, see, I don't know about that. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you can show you can up 15 jets- minutes before the flight, literally walk on and- It's 500 each way for the, for the uh, Uber? Yeah. Yeah. So and and each way for Jet Suite X is probably uh, like if you catch the last like, ticket of a flight out, it's like six hundred bucks. Okay. And that's like you know if you're you're just unlucky yeah. and you catch the the worst possible scenario. Right. So Perk, like, I'm being told that you should uh, put the brand new Will Jaffe tough one that he just put out a, a moment ago on oh, the show. No, he did a tough oh. one, and we're gonna get to experience it together. Oh, I, I, yeah, I haven't clicked play, but I'm, oh yeah. I, we're here for we it. Have, we have Guapo's no, on it. So. Guapo's got it. We're gonna all hear it together. Oh baby, baby. yeah. And with uh, the and after that, by the way, my uh, two year old is waking up. I don't a lot think of I opinions going on out there. Cry, so nope. yeah, that that's that's fine. Let's let's watch this in a minute. Let's watch this and then we'll let you go. Yeah. What's up, guys? Um, a lot of opinions going on out there, and I get it. Everyone's entitled to their own, but so am I. You know what that means. It's time. It's time for a tough conversation with Len Ashby. Look, Len, I get it. You've been around for a long time. You've seen people come and go. You're not the biggest fan of Airball or Lynn. But for you to stand up here on a soapbox telling us what's good for the game, talking about how there's two types of people in poker, yeah, you're right, bro. There are two types of people in poker. There are those that grind, work hard, try to do things the right way. And there are those that host high-stakes private games in casinos and try to keep all those players out of the game so they can play with rich whales. And you used to be a grinder, bro. You came up on fucking houseboats in Mississippi. 
But now you host one of the biggest PLO games in Vegas, and you keep players like me out because it's not good for your bottom line. So for you to come up on here all high and mighty, talking about what type of personalities we should look up to, nah, you don't get to do that, bro. And on the same token, if you're taking a paycheck from a site with a history of shady business dealings, bad rep, you don't get to do that either, okay? Just take your money and shut the fuck up. Man. Whoa. Spicy. Whoa. That, was, that was a tough one. That was... Oh. Yeah. He's I didn't back. even laugh. No, I was going to say it wasn't even funny. It was just a direct, like, fuck you. Wow. <laughs> wow. I think we have our next beef. <laughs> I think we do. Thanks. You watching this? A, I know it's going to have to be a pot limit Omaha high stakes feud. I, here I it never is. thought we'd have the great game in front of us on display any ever again. I mean, here it is, Hanksy, right, right at your doorstep. You yeah. know? There you go. The young dankness. Honestly, honestly, getting light on a, on a stream is is worth every bit of the price of admission anyway. I'm not sure if you saw this also, but Nick Wright, mm -hmm. you know, side, he's a friend, but yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he put out a tweet calling out last night's show and he essentially challenged Airball to, to, uh, to playing poker before he runs out of his trust fund money, as he all, put it. Yo, all these guys need to fucking relax, yeah. man. Like, this is why I can't, I can't be bringing wells to the public like this. Yeah, they're, they're coming after what you're, after, what yeah, you're trying geez, to get. Man, you, like, like, they, they don't even let me fill up yet. Like, they're trying to pick the bones clean. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bunch of goddamn hyenas. <laughs> Speaking of hyenas. <laughs> well, laughing hyenas. Uh, all right, Brent. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll let you get out of here. Thank you, guys. Thanks for keeping it real, as always, Berkey. And, uh, you know, I got to respect all of your takes. I, I may not agree with them, but I respect them. Yeah, I appreciate yep, that, man. For sure. Yeah. It's mutual. See you, guys. Thanks, Brent. Thanks, buddy. Bye. So that was uh, that was high stakes poker, mm -hmm. or as I have it de deemed, high stakes Joker. High stakes See Joker. What I did there. Right. Yeah, I saw. I saw See what did. I did there. Mm -hmm. um, one last thing I want to I want to talk about. I guess I don't even know if it's much of a discussion, but I want to I want to shine some light on it just because it was very meaningful. Uh, someone that I've been gambling with in the high stakes community for a very long time, um, businessman very well respected in the community in the space just reached out to me and you know we don't like talk much outside of when we play maybe have exchanged a few texts here and there uh but nothing major uh but he reached out to me and he sent me this poem if and he just said just getting caught up on all of this nonsense uh this just really reminded me of you and i wanted to share uh i think wapo has it real quick if by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose, and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except will, which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with sixty seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, 
You'll be a man, my son. So I kind of wanted to share that as a bit of a palate cleanser uh, after all of this drama and bullshit has been taking place, but also uh, just a very meaningful thing to be sent to me. I don't know how I wasn't aware of it before, but that really is in a nutshell to me anyway, uh, how I view a man should live his life, right? Like that's, that's to me the output or the outlook of, of life and what we should be aspiring to. Uh, it leads to empathy. It leads to... Um, you know, uh, more sharing, more generosity, more uplifting of one another rather than tearing each other down. And it kind of reminded me of one thing that I regret from yesterday's session of uh, where I thought that there was an opportunity to insert myself. Because for the better part of seven hours, I truly didn't really feel like I needed to speak. Uh, I felt like my actions have, have spoken enough up until that point. I, I really felt like everybody's doing a good job of uh, digging their own grave, so to speak. Um, but there was a point where Doug and Eric were having a conversation about business, poker, money, et cetera. Um, and it was either right before or right after Airball went on his tangent about wanting to play bigger, playing his own money, and all this other nonsense. Uh, and I thought that there was a lot of opportunities. You know, they were giving Doug a hard time saying that he sold action last night. And they kept saying it was backing. And he kept trying to correct them and say, like, that's not what backing is. It's selling it's very different i don't have makeup i don't i don't work for someone etc and you know they weren't hearing it and that's fine but the point i'm trying to arrive at is what i wish i had inserted into that conversation is asking them very poignantly because what eric was trying to point out was that doug's not in the arena where he could make a pile of money. He basically said like eight million dollars. Yeah, he said, Do yeah. you see a path where you could make eight million dollars? And Doug was like, Yeah, I think so. He goes, Okay, so you see a path. You see what growth looks like, you see what scale looks like, etc. He goes, Do you think you could ever make that in poker? And Doug goes, Absolutely not. And Eric's like, I know people that make eight million in poker. Rob knows people that make eight million in poker. Yada yada yada. And I think his overarching point was just that um, you know, us younger guys in accordance to the to the game and as professionals who aren't necessarily dipping our toes that deep into the business waters, et cetera, we're, we're playing the kitty game. We're, we're in a very small pool, whatever. Right. But the way that I wanted to insert myself was to ask him and everybody, because the common theme at that table was so clearly that money matters. Everybody with the exception, I would say of Jennifer and Rob seemed to really lead with their wealth over and over. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy, he came in late. Um, but the, the overall consensus was that everybody there was very much leading with their wealth. A lot of the digs that were coming through from, you know, the LA collective, the Dugs, et cetera, it, it was under, there were underpinnings of your poor or underpinnings of Yet, you're uh, not successful. Doug said something about like, oh, I'm, I'm not the richest person here, but I'm definitely not the poorest. Right, and yeah, like, he like ranked himself. He's like, mm -hmm. I think I'm the fourth richest in this yeah, game, whatever. Yeah, like, right? who cares? So it was, right. it, was, it was clear that there was this fragility mm -hmm. around measuring yourself in accordance to wealth, right? And I really regret not kind of speaking up in that moment and just asking everybody there, why does it matter? All of us, all eight of us in that game, were sitting with a minimum of $100,000. <laughs> all of us, including those of us that sold, had a huge chunk of ourselves, right? Tens of thousands of dollars, probably six figures at risk. All of us are living very fruitful lives. None of us are hurting for food, hurting for housing, shelter, comfort, security. None of, none of that, right? Why does it matter? Why does, eight ma why does 8 million matter? Why does 80 million matter? Why does 800 million matter? Like, to me, I feel like we've completely lost the plot of not just how privileged we are to even get to do this as a hobby or you know in doug in my uh doug in my case we, we do it for a living right but why on earth would anything because the implication is kind of like you're willing to do anything for the right price right mm -hmm. and i guess like my question there is at what point is there no longer a price? At what point are you just comfortable enough where it's like, I'm unwilling to compromise my sanity, my happiness, my, my morals, my character, whatever the case may be, for additional money, right? 
And to be totally fair, I put myself in a situation that wasn't super pleasant uh, because I thought that my win rate was relatively high. But I also want to kind of clarify that, like, you know, Hunt asked me afterwards, he's like, have you ever played a more miserable game? I go, bro, that game was like a four and a half. <laughs> I was like, if they would have turned the cameras off, I would have considered it to be a seven. Like, that wasn't miserable to me at all. And he's like, I'm just not used to, like, being in environments that hostile. I'm like, that, that was so fucking tame. Like, so insanely tame. Nobody actually had anything of substance to say. Right. You know, there were no actual ta- attacks that, that, like, had any facts backing them in any capacity it was just like there's like no all, takedown there's yeah, that just, no takedown moment it's all just yeah. like childish mm-hmm. bullshit where like yeah. they're poking your nose you know mm-hmm. i'm gonna walk over on break and and i'm gonna record uh me stacking berkey like you know i'm gonna yeah, watch like, the playback whatever. and like this is this whatever. is what you got oh you take my chips them? yeah take my chips right. who gives a shit man it's one yeah. hand of poker mm-hmm. you know and there was a point where like doug got doug lost a huge pot to person and airball was like trying to butter me up i guess and he's like Berkey, does that make you happy? I'm like, what? He's like, that hand. Does that hand make you happy? It makes me happy to see Doug get sacked. And I'm like, it's a hand. Yeah, you, yeah, you literally said it's just a hand. It, it's just a hand, man. Doug's been stacked. I've been stacked. We'll all be stacked. Like, who the fuck cares? How are you emotionally invested in these results? It doesn't matter. And it, it, to me, it all comes back to that. And- it is, but it all comes back to that root core of being measured by money. Mm-hmm. Right? When Lynn challenged whether or not I'm successful, her sole barometer is I'm not worth 10 million. Right. Right. That's the sole barometer that, that she's operating off of. As if you were worth 9 million, that, that, that's not success. Right. And, and, you know, I say 10 loosely, but right, like, right, yeah. what's the difference between five and 10? Right. Right. What's the difference here? What, what changes in any of our lives? Why are we jumping through hoops in order to accrue a little bit extra paper yeah. that we but can't is, take with us when is, we die. I mean, this is like, you know, a big problem in America in general, like where like we fantasize and we glorify like money so much uh, that it's, it's the scoreboard, right? It's like, why, why are when, when people are billionaires, they want to be multi-billionaires or hundred billionaires, right? Like it, at that point, it's just, it's all game and it's all about like, this is what matters the most and this is what makes you successful. But at the end of the day, it's like there, there really isn't a difference between a hundred million or in, and a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess like, I, I guess the issue that I see is that I think at the core, uh, the people I've brushed elbows with in these arenas are pretty remarkable humans in very different ways. Some are so high up on the intellectual scale that you're just in awe of even being in their presence, hearing them speak, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a great person though, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, like some are so high on the EQ scale that like you just feel warm being in their presence. Like they're just so good at understanding and navigating that environment. And there's a whole wide spectrum in between, but like, to be in that arena, you had to have been successful at something somewhere along the lines, right? Yeah. Uh, and I feel like getting to brush elbows with all of these people, it, it's been a very eye-opening experience throughout the last 10 or 15 years of just how quickly somebody who could be, in my opinion anyway, as an observer, somebody who could be wildly impactful to the world at large, to society at a whole, or to bare minimum their local community just get trapped by the the sight of trying to get the high score and doug even made this comment the the irony is like at one point he's measuring himself as like the fourth richest at the table or whatever later on hours later he goes i try not to get into pissing matches about net worth because the fact of the matter is there's always gonna be someone richer always gonna be somebody who wants to play bigger stakes that can price you out of the game yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's that's absolute facts. Mm-hmm. And it's also so meaningless. Just doesn't matter if we're playing 500 or sorry, 50 100, 501k or 5k 10k. It doesn't change anything if the players are the same. Right? Like it yeah. just doesn't matter. The the same skill sets are going to be on display. Like if you're talking about the the airball me heads up match, the stakes we play just don't matter. 
Right. All that matters is how much money would, or, or the only thing it would affect is how much money changes hands. Mm -hmm. But as far as like a measurement of skill or whatever we're trying to get to the bottom of, we could play $1, $2, we could play 1K, 2K. It truly doesn't matter. And I think people are so blinded by this desire to accrue wealth once they're already so wealthy. They forgot to be driven by accruing uh, integrity and, and like morality and, you know, growing that human side of themselves. They, they're so blinded by the rat race that whenever they're, they get the reprieve they're looking for, which is financial freedom, they're, they're too programmed to just trying to grow it further, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I thought that, uh, honestly, I think the most, the, the biggest reason why that poem hit me so hard was not because I, I try to embody that as much as I can, even though I fail a lot along the ways, but the source that it came from, I didn't know him to be like that. Like we talked for an hour or so thereafter, and I was just shocked to learn so much about like how he came up and how his struggle allowed him to get to where he's at now and like how empathetic he is and how quick he is to forgive and you know the shitty things that he's gone through i saw him as a rich businessman who seemed to be the type that like fucked around found out and is just like doubling down on his success day over day over day you know sometimes he steps in shit and just has like this six or, or sorry uh nine or ten figure deal fall into his lap that type of stuff it's just like okay like i get it like that's not not 10 figure but like you know eight or nine figure right. uh deal and it's like okay like i get it like that's what makes you sit but no what now my my view of him is like what makes him successful is that he's able to do all that and not be distracted from growing as a human being mm -hmm. like he's such a good dude in a way that i wasn't necessarily privy to a few hours ago and that's like what i wish could come out of like shit like yesterday is people actually going back rewatching that seven hours and just like living through the cringe moment of like, I can't believe I behaved this way. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can't believe that I've allowed myself to get put into a situation where I behaved so uh, disingenuously. Like I was such an inauthentic version of myself. Like, and don't get me wrong. You're not going to do it the day after. No, but like, hell, I might even do it four or five years from now. I might watch that back and see some of the interviews and just be like man that was a really bad look mm -hmm. it's like that seems to be the best takeaway from this type of stuff not to get like on a, a on a big high horse but i don't know I, I just think with how much shit was going on over the last four or five weeks it's a it's a nice reminder that we get to play a fucking game for a living where a lot of money changes hands and there are a lot of people in this world that are desperately watching from the outside looking in with their faces pressed against the glass, wishing they could just get a taste, you know. And I, I don't think we pay enough attention to that. Yo, you got us on slow mo on the yeah. on the outro. <laughs> you trying something today? Damn, Damn slow jam. Sharp, buddy. You're sharp. Well, Berkey slowed. He slowed the podcast down. He got very serious. So that's kind of like, like where you're you at. know, yeah. I like where you're at. All right, man. That's gonna do it for us. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We appreciate you guys so much. I hope you did enjoy whatever came of yesterday's high stakes action. I hope you enjoyed Brent as our guest. We're gonna be back in the building Monday. Uh, I'm not sure if Conrad and Landon are gonna be back yet. I know the not main Landon. event. Not Landon. Not Landon. Landon's going to Vancouver. Oh, that's right. We lose Landon for a while. But Connie should be back. Yeah. All right. Your 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 host of the most will be back Monday. He'll be here to get it popping. Um, we'll have updates from Airball. I play Sunday. I play again Monday, again, Strat Chat Wednesday with Matt Hunt next week. So we'll be looking forward to that. Thank you guys as always. We'll see you guys on Monday. Peace.